Okay, now look, that's that's all I'm gonna teach you. Those are the basics of Maya. You know how to do all those things now. But of course, you know, software isn't really as important in itself as what you do with it. And that's the important thing. What you do as a designer, how you make this software work for you. Because software is not meant to manipulate you or force you to do things in certain ways. You're the one in control as a designer. So you must now decide what you want to do and you make this software do it for you. That's the way to go, all right? Now, I'm going to describe four exercises that you should be able to do now with some practice. And what I want you to do is as you render them, as you get little test clips, I want you to send them in to this video clip as a video response. And I want to see what kind of collection we can, of work we can get from not only from my students in my classes, but from anyone else like you who might be watching. All right? So let me quickly describe four different exercises. Exercise one, using the most basic modeling skills. What I want you to do is to create a household object, okay? An iron, a kettle, a, uh, a glass, a vase, an object, anything that, that is industrially designed, okay? Now, if you, if you want help on knowing what I'm talking about, either now or sometime very soon in the future. Another one of my lectures, a lengthy lecture on the history of industrial design will be on this channel. So if you need uh, stimulation, you might want to watch that lecture on industrial design to sort of get you rolling. Now that lecture is on the uh, streamlined decade of the 1930s in the States and when everything was smooth and uh, aerodynamic and very clever and stylish. So that might uh, provide some inspiration for you. All right? Just a static object in the middle of your grid and I want you to set up a camera so it rotates around on a circle and I want you to do about two or three seconds of that. All right? And send it to me. Your object in the middle of the grid with a camera rotating around it for about three seconds. Send it in as a video response and we'll see what we get, okay? Exercise two. I want you to do Stonehenge, all right? I want you to model Stonehenge. That means a landscape surface that has a finite border and Stonehenge itself, and you can find plenty of references for Stonehenge on the web in about a second, all right? But I don't want you to make Stonehenge out of stone. I want you to make it out of Swiss cheese, all right? I want you to make, Sw I want you to make Stonehenge, the big blocks, I want you to make those Swiss cheese blocks, okay? Now, Swiss cheese, if, if you don't know, that's the cheese that has all the air holes in it, okay? You should be able to do that using the Boulin's functions in the software, okay? Subtracting, etc. Now, not only do I want you to make Stonehenge made out of Swiss cheese, but I want you to set your camera up so we do a flyby, all right? About five seconds long, just, just as if an airplane was flying over your cheesy Stonehenge. Okay? Now I want you to send that in as a video response to this tutorial if you ever get to it. We'll try it anyway. All right. Exercise three is a molecular structure. You remember the old style of uh, uh, molecules that used to be popular in the 50s and 60s? That's where you have balls in the middle, both protons and neutrons lumped together, different colors, just like those old uh, modeling sets that they used to have. And uh, so what you want to do is make a nucleus of both red and blue balls, equal numbers of each, okay? And around that nucleus, I want you to make, well, you choose how many electrons you want to have circling, circling this nucleus, okay? Basic structure. And what you do with that, I leave up to you, all right? So it can be five, ten seconds, as long as you want, really, because by that time, with the experience you'll have from the first exercises, I want you to start using your own initiative now. I don't care what the surfaces look like, you can make marble, marble atoms if you'd like, marble molecules. You can do anything you want, okay? Send it to me, and then 
hopefully there'll be loads of them on there and you can see how how you've done and what other people have done okay and of course the last the last exercise of all which is which is my students final project on the course is a complete animation that lasts three minutes long all right three minutes of animation now in this animation there needs to be a distinct beginning middle and end all right something has to happen some has to be structured in some way it has to start in a certain way and something else has to happen and then it has to end in a certain way all right now okay what do you do well if you're if you're at loss of what you might do in that situation i want you to refer back to another tutorial on this site about keith herring because what that's all about is what kind of designer you are and what things influence you as an individual designer. The things that make you the person that you are with the viewpoints that you have and wanting to express your own individual thoughts. Because that's what you're doing with this animation really. You're choosing an audience that you want to speak to. You're coming up with something that you want to say to this specific audience. And then thinking about the two, you come up with the exact solution about how to say what you want to the right person, or how to say it. So, what you want to say, who you're saying it to, and how are you saying it. Alright, three minutes. Now, using the editing, this ed editing techniques within the software itself, that is a very advanced function, and I don't recommend it or at this point if you're just starting out. But if you have access to any kind of other video editing software, Final Cut Pro, uh, even Premiere, right? If you export individual clips as MOV files or whatever file you need to do to work in your editing software, and then edit within editing software rather than within Maya, all right? And that will prove to be possibly a, a, a better way to approach your three minutes. Now, I've said enough about that. You guys just run with it now, and then send it in and we'll see what you've got, okay? But this concludes part six of the six-part series, Maya 8.5, The Basics. And uh, I just want to say something right now. First of all, helping me behind the scenes back here are two students who are working on this research grant with me. They're working as production assistants. Nick and Stacy, thanks very much. Chris Curtis provided the technical know-how to set up this whole thing. And of course the people that assigned, that awarded the grant to me down in, uh, 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 at the University of Hull, uh, uh, Simon and uh, Brian, thanks very much. And uh, 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 happy to have the opportunity to do this experiment. I'm curious to see what happens. So thanks very much and see you again sometime.